How to two bars one figure version one. I'm going to be covering how to get Bulma home through these bars. Now this is a two bar two platform configuration. This is one of the more common ones that I see set up in a lot of these arcade games. Now what you see here is me actually lifting the package. Do not aim for this. This is not typically going to happen. As you can see, the crane arms did give out after a few moments. The whole point of these crane arms is actually for pushing. As you can see here, when I pushed on one side of the package, it actually shifted it over almost as much as when I lifted it. The whole point of these games is to actually get one side of the package moved over so that way you can get the package perpendicular with the uh, hole itself in the bars. A big thing to keep in mind is whether or not the package will fit through these bars easily or not. I have seen games where the hole is just not very big so you're really relying on a lot of luck. As you can see I slightly offset the crane from the package itself allowing it to kind of shift over more. This only will occur though if you actually have it more focused on one side than the other. Another thing to pay attention to is to these tension cords or chains that will be set up either in the front of the crane or it will be built in internally. Now, the ones that you really want to pay attention to are the ones with the cords already on the outside. This is something that you can make note of. Whereas on a normal crane, it will be built into the system itself. So you won't be able to see that twist or that pull. Something else to really pay attention to these two platform, two bar configurations is if you're working with very little room, sometimes these arms will get stuck on the platforms, just like this. Now if you pay close attention to this tension cable here, you'll notice that it actually brings the crane slightly forward. Try to use this knowledge to your advantage. This is always a big thing when you're trying to get figures, especially if you're trying to win something that you want. The other thing you really gotta pay attention to is the fact that these tension cords will also twist and make the crane arm on the other side go the opposite direction. As you can see, that crane arm landed on the back platform. You can also end up with it landing on the grip bar itself, which kind of gives the same effect. Depending on the sensor built into these UFO cranes, even if it lands on the bar, you can still get that arm underneath the package. As you can see, when it caught onto the grip bar here, it still made it underneath the package after it broke itself free, but it only moved it a little bit, and nothing significant. Pushing is really what these cranes excel at. It all depends on if you know the crane itself. That's why it's good to get used to some of these cranes before you really try and play it your first time. Expect to spend a little bit of money. Sometimes you can lift the package up out of the position it's already in, but don't expect this to happen very often. That grip tape can be very strong. I would always try to keep in mind, if you're willing to buy this figure from a store, that should be what dictates whether or not you try to attempt to win it from a crane game. Sometimes when you have an exposed corner, basically a corner that is not resting on one of the two grip bars, that can be used to your advantage. But you typically want enough space that it's going to roll or that it'll be useful for you. This is where the push is really going to come into play. Something to really keep in mind is a lot of these arcades will offer you a bonus try when you're trying to win something. So if you're putting 500 yen into a machine, it'll give you six tries. 
but make sure you're paying attention to the machine. Sega arcades typically do not offer this, so do not expect it at every single machine. Also, make sure that you actually put in all five coins prior to continuing. Another great tactic is if you know that the arms can lift, or they have a decent bit of grip on them, try and lift it up over one of the bars and try and get it to fall over that way. The problem with this is, is if the frame itself is not very large, you can actually end up messing yourself up by having it rest on the frame lip. Or getting stuck and having to get an attendant to reset it. And typically when they reset, they're going to reset it to square one. Sometimes you can ask assistance from an attendant if you've made multiple attempts. You're $20 into an attempt already. They'll typically take pity on you and try and attempt to position it in a better win scenario. That being said, do not expect this of all arcades. Another great tactic that sounds really off the walls is actually to get one arm stuck on a grip bar. The reason for this is, is because sometimes if it twists enough, what you can actually do is get that one arm slightly underneath the package. Another awesome idea is that it'll actually, when it comes off the grip bar, if it has enough, you know, strength in the spring, it'll actually attempt to throw the arm into the package itself, which could result in more movement than not doing so. That being said, this requires a great amount of spatial acuity, so do not expect too much from this one. Now there's a number of tactics you can use to try and get a package perpendicular with the bars. You can try and lift, or you can try and push. You can also try some off-the-wall things like trying to push on corners that are already exposed, or even trying to push on the top of the package. Sometimes you'll get lucky with some crazy ideas, so always try and think outside the box. Alright, it's time to save Bulma. So what I'm going to first do is try and roll her out onto the bars. I need to get her into a position so that I can evaluate exactly what I need to do. As you can see here, I've already got one corner exposed off of one of the grip bars. The other corners are resting on either a grip bar or a platform, but since I've got one already exposed and I know the crane goes forward, I can just try and swoop in and try and get her to sink down in between the bars like this. Now the great thing about this is, is now it's no longer resting on the grip tape bars. So if I can get the crane right up against that bar, I can actually pull her up onto that plastic platform. As you can see here, I did attempt to try and lift Bulma from the back, but due to that twist that's already built into it, that is not a very viable method. So I'm going to stick to trying to go from the front end. It's always a good idea to pay close attention to how the figure looks on the box, or the display looks. This will dictate where the weight in the box itself lies. That being said, if it's got a large base on the display, that does not necessarily mean where the weight is. The base is usually not attached to the figure itself. Figures are usually multiple pieces inside this box, and you have to put them together. One thing to really keep in mind though, is this means the weight is usually a lot more evenly distributed depending on the figure itself. This Bulma is more evenly distributed versus like a Super Saiyan 3 Goku where the hair would be a lot heavier. What I should have done in this instance actually should have been to attempt to push the package where that one corner is and try and get it through the bars that way. But since I did not do that, I'm gonna try and get it perpendicular with the bars. And as you can see here, it just fell into place, so that saved me a little bit of trouble right there. If the crane has a teardrop shape on the tip, that means it's good to wedge it in between the package itself and the bar. That's because it causes more movement when it tries to raise itself out of between the package and bar. So now that I've got the package perpendicular with the bars, my main goal is to just try to get one of these edges off of the grip tape. Now there's a number of factors that come into play here. Could you use one of the arms to try and push more of the corner off of the grip bars? 
if it twists too much or if it's too weak and it's tripping the sensor too early, that's not going to work for you. What you can try is also using a, a crane arm to try and get up underneath where the package is resting and try and kind of jiggle it free by working on one side versus the other. Now, another great aspect is if you already know that a crane has a strong arm versus a weak arm, what you want to really try to do is try to lift one side. And what's going to happen is sometimes you'll end up with enough momentum that when it tries to drop back down, it'll just pass right through the bars. Um, I would say if this crane went low enough to use the housing and try and push it through the bars with that, but due to that tension cord that I already mentioned earlier, I know that it will not go low enough to actually warrant that. Some other great tips and tricks involved with this is to always try and be willing to ask for help. A lot of these attendants will help you. They will try and give you advice. If you're not sure on how to deal with the machine, just feel free to ask. Sometimes there's displayed stickers right along the panel of the glass itself. So that'll give you kind of an idea as to what you're supposed to do. But again, don't be afraid to try and ask. Even if you speak English and they don't, they'll at least try to show you. Now, since I know that the right arm on this machine has better lift, I'm going to try and lift this package and try and get more momentum in the fall action on it. Alright, and as you can see here, we lift, it drops right through the bars, and there we go, we have managed to save Bulma. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys one other attempt with this uh, on a machine that I'm already well aware of how to handle. So this one is Reju Vin Smoke. It's also a two-bar, two-platform configuration. And what we're going to try and do is roll her out onto the bars like so. As you can see, I've got very little on that bottom part of the box that's actually on that bar. So we're going to try and shift that. So since there's very little grip tape actually touching the box itself, you're actually more able to move it. And since I know that this machine already has more strength than the arms for lifting, I can go ahead and do a lot more repositioning with it. Um, as you can see, it fell in an upright position where more of the weight is actually on one of the other bars. But because I know these cranes can actually lift, I can use that to my advantage to try and tip it over to be perpendicular. Alright, we're starting to see some progress here. It's almost perfectly perpendicular with the bars. All I've got to do is a couple more attempts here to shift it in. And since there's only one corner on the grip bar itself, all I've really got to do is lift there by trying to slide one arm right underneath the package. And she falls right through, and there we go. We've managed to save Reju. As you can see, this took much for your tries, and that's all that it is. I hope this helped you out. Feel free to like, subscribe. Uh, if I get enough response on this, I plan to make how-to videos on many, many different tables. So please give me your feedback, and I hope you guys enjoyed it.